Hi, and welcome to the latest webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We'll be running these webinars regularly again this year and recording them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The previous webinars from this training series, as well as the webinars from our Industry Solutions series and our What's Coming from 12D series, are all available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During today's presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights if there's time. Today's webinar, 12D Model Quick Water Network, will be presented by Dylan Ravel, a regional sales manager for 12DNZ with over 16 years of experience in civil engineering practice, land development, drainage and construction. The Quick Water Network tool in 12D Model 15 allows you to rapidly create a water network layout of 12D model water strings. A user-friendly user interface and graphical image overlays make this the easiest way for new or existing users to create a network and understand the relationships and purposes of the nodes and links. Used as a quick start option for either the concept stormwater designer or water network editor, it makes creating water networks quick and easy. Over to you, Dylan. Thank you, Lisa. So hello and welcome to the 12D model webinar on the Quickwater Network. I'm going to be running through a couple of PowerPoint slides to start off with just to take you through the key points and a bit of a summary of the Quickwater Network and what it's all about. So to start off with the Quickwater Network, what is it? Well, it's a tool that gives you the ability to lay out a plan layout or a two dimensional layout of a water network, which includes nodes and links gives you the choice to choose uh, to use either the water defaults that are set within 12D model or manual defaults. So you can choose which node types and which link types are actually created when using the quick water network. And the important thing is it creates 12D model water strings that you can then enhance and take on afterwards in either the stormwater concept designer or the water network editor. And it gives you a user-friendly interface interface to quickly create and edit those network of nodes and links themselves. It does automatic string node and link naming of the network so you don't start off with something that doesn't have a name. And if we have a look at the interface itself and what the key points behind that is, it shares common interface options with the concept stormwater designers. So there will be a lot of the icons and the, the way that it works that are familiar if you take the network that you've created in the quick water network and then enhance it inside the concept stormwater designer you have simple left click to create right click edit and middle click multi options which you'll see in the demonstration and it gives you an image overlay so you get a uh, instantaneous feedback or a spatial display feedback of what the network is doing itself Gives you some options to for creation um, and editing the plan layout, plan layout of the water network. Edit types include node type, node size, node name, and node color. You can change those yourself one by one. And similarly for the link type, link name, link size, and link color options for editing. Once you've created the network using the Quick Water Network or the Quick Start. All of the extra hydraulic and hydrological defaults can be applied using a water model template. And you'll see that in action. And I highly recommend that you start utilizing water model templates all throughout your water design processes inside 12D model. It can then be opened in the water network editor to add all of the um, construction level details, such as the grading, uh, pipe grading, the BIM and construction attribution, adding all your tri meshes linking to your road string for locations, and as well as your hydrological and your hydraulics analysis within the water network editor. Or 
you could also open that in the stormwater concept designer for the rational, the dynamic wave, hydrological and hydraulics analysis. So you can pick and choose essentially between the three how you can edit the network. So let's go and see this in action. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick across to a 12D model project that I have all ready for us to show you about the quick water network. We'll take you through the tools and we'll also take you through what you can do with that network once it's been created using the quick water network. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over using my version 15 standard toolbars, quick access toolbars. I do want to load up the water workspace so I have a way that I can access those other 12D model water design options inside 12D model. And when I'm going to start placing these nodes and links, I'm not really worried in, in the interim about snapping to anything. So I'm going to turn off the point snap and the line snaps just so I can basically pick in space and let some other tools figure out the exact placement a little later on. So first off, when I'm going up to the water, water network, there's a new option called the quick water network. This will give you the opportunity to populate what model that this quick water network is going to be created in. Um, as a default, it takes whatever set in the CAD properties toolbar at the top here. And I already had that preset, so I'm quite happy with that. The bypass model will automatically, name will automatically be populated um, once you are happy with the water network model name. And as I said, it has a spatial image overlay and you can choose either when you start up or when you're in session to change the size of those images um, depending on the zoom scale that you zoomed out and whether you can see them or not. And like any water network or water stream creation inside 12D, you get a choice. Are you drawing the, the network um, from the top level to the bottom level? So the same as the string direction as the flow direction or you're doing it from the bottom to the top. So your flow direction is actually opposite to the string direction. When you start placing nodes and links, you can choose to either use the water string defaults if I open up what the water string defaults currently are. So my default node info um, currently has an MH1050 offset type and the link info currently has a RCRRJ class two link type and I've got some default dimensions for those. So I can either take what's currently set within the water string defaults or if I untick that, it's going to populate with what's there anyway to start off with, but I can override what's in the water string defaults. And there is something in here, the name prefix for your nodes and your links. You can change that um, whenever you want to. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the water string defaults. I'll just use what you see on the panel here. And then once I'm happy with those startup information, as soon as I hit set, it's going to fire up the quick water network editing interface. And before we see what each of these items do, just um, noting the three different options that you have on most of these buttons uh, inside the interface itself. There is a left mouse button. You'll see those three square brackets. So if you, once you're starting with the quick water network, if you just keep an eye out on the tooltips that it's giving you in the panel information area there, um, gives you an idea of what happens when you click it with a left mouse button or a middle mouse button or a right mouse button. So we have the edit tool, so you can edit a node or edit a link, left mouse button or right mouse button. You've got one move tool, there is only one option on that, which is a left mouse button. The information can also be used to access or re-access the defaults. We'll show you how that works. And you can either delete a node or with a right mouse button, you can delete nodes and links. The nodes area itself, um, you do have nodes, inlets, and outlets. These will be automatically calculated for you pretty much based on the layout of your interface or layout of your network, I should say. And then you have the link options where you can have a link or a um, trapezoidal channel. And you can also start drawing your bypass links in here as well. And you'll notice that in particular, the link and the trapezoidal channel, they have a middle mouse button option, which is create multiple. So you can create multiple links just by um, clicking subsequently on the screen one after the other after the other. OK, so let's go and create some nodes and links. You can either do these individually, which you probably will never do, um, 
or you can use the multi options, which I'll show you. So if I was to wanting to create a single node, um, I can just left click over the node option. And you'll notice that in yellow, it tells you what it's expecting, but also a lot of these options you need to get an eye on or keep an eye on whether it's saying to escape to finish most of these options within the quick water network to finish doing something placing a node or um, editing a node or a link you need to hit the escape button to finish and it'll always tell you there within the panel message area so i'm just going to zoom in on an area i'm going to go and place a single node and you'll see that the option is still on you can see that the button's depressed and it's saying hey still set node locations and if i place another node you'll see the start of the image spatial overlay so you can see where they are and what type they are and if i want to complete creating some nodes i do have to hit escape and you'll see that those options are finished now the beauty of creating and snapping two nodes with links is you don't really have to be very accurate you'll remember that i've turned off my point snap and my um, line snap as long as you're in a general location of those image overlays, it's going to pick up that, hey, that pipe is going to be connected into that pit. So if I go and create a single link just by left mouse button, I'm just picking in the general location between those two links. And you'll see the image overlay changes a little bit. It's, no, it's noticed that that node is the last node in a water string so it's automatically changed that image overlay to an outlet just to give you a a bit of a graphical an idea of what that actually is again if i want to cancel putting down links i can hit escape but if i want to carry on and place another link so i don't actually have to have the nodes there before i create the link just by creating the link or drawing the link it is also placing the nodes at the same time and what I might want to do is rather than just do, you know, two clicks for each link, um, I might want to create a multi-link pipeline, essentially. So if I hit escape, I'm going to middle mouse button over the create links, which is a multi-type. And then I can start going and laying out a network. Maybe there's an inlet there, connects to there. There's, that's going to be a junction. And I've got a manhole down here, goes across the other side of the road, and it comes out. In the basin or the pond okay so using the multi-link create it's creating multiple nodes and links as i go down just to complete my network and before i show you how you can override the defaults um, i'm going to place another couple of inlet locations that are going to be joining into my mainline manholes And at the moment, the node types and the link types that are being placed are as per those default settings that I set when I started up the panel. Now, if I'm going to go and change quite dramatically the, the node types and the link types when I'm creating a new line, I can change those defaults as I go. So on the information button, if you right click over that one, you're going to get an option to reset those defaults so i could also change that and change the image size if it wasn't big enough or it was way too big for the size of my network and so this next one i'm going to do is going to be an overland flow channel just to show you what the trapezoidal channel type link creation is and so it cheats each of those node points or the corners of the channel it's not going to be a manhole it's going to be something completely different so i'm going to change the default node type to a uh, channel type node and my links i'm also going to change to a channel type link so once i set that any subsequent links or nodes that i place will have those properties so this is going to be a trapezoidal channel we've got an option there under the links option and this is another one that has a multiple option by middle mouse button so if a middle mouse button over that i'm going to basically say hey i've got an overland channel that's coming and connecting into that node there and you'll see the trapezoidal channel type it will instantaneously give you a different line style or a different overlay so you can quite clearly see hey these are actual pipes these are links and this is a trapezoidal link type or essentially a channel and you can also we'll do the bypass links once we've stuffed um, stopped messing around with some of the locations of those so the left click on the middle mouse button click is going to allow you to create things Typically, the right mouse button on any of these options is editing. 
Okay, so we'll go into some edits, but before I do that, we'll show you what the move option does, because it's quite clever. And I will turn on my point of my line snaps here. So this move option allows you to essentially move a node around. So if I select move and then I pick a junction node that has got more than um, one pipeline going through it, you'll see it recognizes that that is a junction node. And so it will move all of the subsequent links to the location that I choose. And as long as I pick kind of close to that image, it's going to understand that I'm actually editing that node. But I can use the move option to actually detach a junction manhole as well. So with the same move command going, if I pick outside or really further along that pipeline, and if I pick and accept in that location, it knows, OK, what I want to do is I want to move and I want to separate that node from the rest of the water network. So it allows me to very quickly separate that um, and have an individual pipeline. You see it's also given it an automatic naming convention to start off with. So if I go and move that back kind of close to that junction, it now knows that that's a junction and that goes back to being the junction node for N3 being a singular node with multiple pipelines coming in and potentially multiple pipelines going out if you've got the uh, dynamic analysis running. OK, if we go and have a look at some of the other editing options inside the Quickwater Network interface, there is a singular button up here where you can edit either nodes or links by a left mouse button or a right mouse button. I don't tend to use that because my mouse is generally around this area here. But if I left mouse button on that, which allows me to edit a node, and I pick on the node right at the top, these are the editing or the, the editing options that you can change. Um, I might want to change the name. I'll call this DCP1. And I might want to change the node type. Let's call it a um, street cesspit double. And I can have an overriding color inside that particular node as well. So if I hit set to lock in those changes, you'll notice that as I cycle through, Okay, it will do me a different highlight of the node that I'm currently editing, as well as the name itself. And if I just finish that and go back to the main editor, I'm just going to zoom out to a different location. Okay, you can use the edit button, or there is also right click options on the nodes and the links. So right clicking will allow me to edit a node. So if I right click on that one, maybe go down to here, I'm going to change the uh, node type. Uh, I'm going to change this to a head wall outlet. All right, a head wall, 300 head wall outlet type. I could change the name if I wanted to, and if I go set, and then if I cycle through, I can go up to N9. I'm going to change that node type. We'll call that going to be a megapit. And then I'll go to the inlet on the other side, and I'm going to change that to a type hush pit. And so the left click and right click, you'll see that I'm in editing mode. So even when I go finish to um, finish that option, you'll see that that has been depressed. And if I go and have a look at the link editing option, so I can right click over the this one or this one to edit the trapezoidal option. So if I right click and then pick and accept on the link, you'll see it comes up with the link edit. And it's got that type channel grass repose. And I could change the trapezoidal um, bottom with the height and the top width because I used the create trapezoidal link option to create those. So the editing options and what I might want to do is just to finish that off, I might want to actually create a bypass link in preparation for my analysis. So if I create one, say, hey, the bypass node for bypass direction or bypass location from that node is down to that node. Um, and you can obviously start drawing and creating and locating your bypass links for your future analysis options. So essentially, the Quick Water Network allows you to very, very quickly create and edit um, that two-dimensional layout for a water network. Now, once the water network is created, then you can take it into your other tools, which I'll uh, show you how to do. Um, you can close out that session of the Quick Water Network. And the important thing you'll see is it has created actual uh, water strings with nodes and links, which is the quick start option um, and the basis of all 12D model water networks. It is two dimensional, however. So if I go and profile one of those, 
water strings that I've created. Okay, all the pipes are flat and there's some, you know, funny things happening with the nodes because it is in essentially a two-dimensional network that you're creating. If I then want to go and edit the levels or um, do automatic grading, that's when I'd get into some of the other additional tools. And we'll whip through those now. Uh, I can go back at any time into the water water network, quick water network, choose that model that is a quick water network and set that to get my spatial overlay and my tools the back there again. But essentially we're now going to move on after doing the quick start and getting into our actual um, or uh, vertical geometry uh, as opposed to our two-dimensional geometry. So for all of these options, and I'll show you with the Concept Stormwater Designer, you really, really, really want a water model template. If you haven't used water model templates before, they are brilliant. They save away all of your, you know, we'll call them company standard settings for um, grading options, cover files, hydro files. So I'm going to start by actually loading a water model template onto this network that was created from the Quick Water Network. So I'm going to go up to Water Model Template. And I'm going to read a water model template onto that geometry. And my water template file, I've got a rational analysis settings uh, that are saved with this project. So I'm just going to process those. So after processing the water model template, all of my model attributes for my rational analysis settings are now set. So I can go straight into either the water network editor or the uh, concept stormwater designer and start adding information to that network. So to start off with, I'm just going to do a couple of very quick changes. This option, or sorry, this webinar isn't about the water network editor. Um, so if I just go pick edit, I'll pick that one up there. And I've got all my grading files, so I'm just going to hit regrade links, you know, set the node details, and that's taken that two-dimensional network and applied some of my rules straight away and made that a three-dimensional network. So it's done all of the grading based on the um, automatic grading options within the Water Network Editor. Uh, I do want to run an analysis on this, so perhaps I'll just double check the hydraulic inlet type. I'll make that a non-grade pit. And if I go to a catchment, I'll put a very simple, you know, 0.05 catchment area on there, so that's 65% impervious. So I'm going to run some flows down there, and I'm going to go into the analysis and hit run, and that will go and generate the hydrological runoff calculations. And you'll see on my section view, we've now got um, some water running through. And the other thing that the Water Network Editor does is obviously set all of your construction level set out. Uh, with roads file, so if I add that new model into the 3D view, it'll just take a couple of seconds to read all of my Trimesh references based on those particular node types. And you'll see straight away that based on those node types that I've selected, it's gone and assigned all of the um, road strings and the set add information, which is part and parcel of the Water Network Editor. So from the quick water network you can run a water model template and very quickly start putting that into practice for your hydraulics and your hydrology or alternatively you could open the concept stormwater designer there will be other webinars on this and there are actually a couple there so i might have finished my quick water network and instead of opening the water network editor i'm opening up the concept stormwater designer i can choose the model that was created from the quick water network and it's a rational analysis and you'll see here I could apply that water model template um, as part of opening up the concept stormwater designer rather than having to run that separately if I wanted to. You've got a lot of similarities in the concept stormwater designer interface as to what you have in the quick water network so it should start to feel a little bit familiar. Your image overlay sizes, you do have some additional options here with your catchments and your hydrology which I'm not going to go into a great load of detail on. Um, but I'm going to load up that network. I'm going to come into the Concept Stormwater Designer and you'll see you've got these very common options that you had in the Quick Water Network, but you've also got additional ones which are specific to the, you know, the hydraulics and the hydrological analysis side of things. Where I put that catchment area in the Water Network Editor, I can see quite clearly with the spatial overlay that I have a catchment attached to that node. And if I wanted to go and edit that catchment, um, I could right click, pick the catchment, set number that I want to edit, and this is the CSD panel for editing catchments. And rather than having a, 
a 0 0.05 hectare, maybe I'll make it a 0.1, put a lot more flows coming down there, set that. Okay, so that's an extra button over what you saw on the quick network it. And if I just quickly run the analysis, that run, same as I did within the water network, and you'll see that we've got more water coming into those pipelines and I can also access the run results for the rational analysis. So there will be more detailed webinars about the concept stormwater design as well as the improvements inside the water network editor. And a couple of things to finish off the demonstration itself. Um, Eagle-eyed observers might notice that I didn't have any snaps on when I first created that quick water network, so I didn't exactly snap to my road strings. Now that those have been applied uh, using a road design file, um, I can use a couple of options in 12D, one that you will probably have used before, and there might be a new option that I'm going to show you that uh, you might not be aware of inside version 15. So just a couple of little tips to finish off with if I close down that concept stormwater designer. Um, I can run my adjust pits function, which links up to the road strings and correctly positions these um, chambers themselves, because okay, they're looking a little bit weird at the moment. So I'm going to adjust that entire network using a um, pit type offsets file. I'm just going to hit process, and though those will now be accurately located with regards to the um, road strings or the road channel strings. And there's one more little tip I'm going to show you that uh, you may not be aware of that's been brought into some of the later versions of 12D Model 15. Um, I'm going to access the String Attributes Editor. And just bear with me, I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And I'm going to pick on one of those water nodes that I have. And under the Node tab, there's a new um, go-to or a link launcher inside 12D Model 15. So if you have... Um, file links or hyperlinks or synergy links you can now launch those straight out of 12d so if i go and have a look at that one there it's got a hyperlink to it i can hit the go to button or the link launcher and that's going to fire up that particular um, hyperlink that was in as an attribute and that can be an image file as well and just so i'm not playing favorites with manufacturers if i go to this node over here and i select that link and hit the go to button that's going to fire up the other manufacturer's information directly from that URL. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my PowerPoint presentation, just for the last little bit of this webinar. And we'll just have a little bit of a look at the summary. So in summary, the quick water network, it gives you the ability to quickly start a planned 2D layout of a water network, uh, water strings, nodes, and links. It creates those water strings that can then be updated or taken further within the concept stormwater designer or the water network editor. It's got a nice user-friendly interface to quickly edit the network. And most importantly, don't forget to use a water model template when you go above the steps of the quick water network because it will make your life so much easier so what i'll do now is i'm going to pass back to lisa and see if any of you attending have any questions thanks dylan yes we've had quite a few questions through today i've just chosen uh just a handful um to read out to you live and then i'll send you a, a summary of them um after the presentation so Michael in New South Wales has asked, do you need to have an existing design surface created for this to work? Now, that was quite early on in the presentation, so I'm not sure if you've got something to relate that to, Dylan, but um, uh, if, uh, if uh, not, I'll get you to email Michael later. That's fine. I can absolutely answer that. No, you don't need to select a design surface for creating a quick water network. It's purely just 2D. Um, the design surface is either specified later on in the water network editor or the concept stormwater designer. So just think of it um, as clicking points on a plan without having to specify a tin for grading right at the start. Wonderful. OK, and um, Vicky and Christchurch said uh, sort of confirming, if a symbol shows an outlet, it may actually be a manhole. It's just symbolic for end of a network. 
Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Just symbolic. It, that type could be whatever it is. It's really just giving you a graphical representation that that's the last node in a water string. Great. Uh, and actually, Michael had another question. Um, does the concept stormwater system allow modelling of detention basins? It most certainly does. Um, that allows in the later versions of version 15, not only the dynamic wave or the 1D modelling, which gives you all of your basins and links and um, orifices and uh, attenuation, you can also now um, run a rational analysis like I showed in the demonstration. So yes, absolutely you can. Um, it's a fantastic tool that's been, uh, had a lot of work done in version 15. Great. Uh, we had one from to Neil in Queensland. Um, what is the purpose of this toolbox compared to the standard create water strings features? Uh, when should we use this versus the standard create functions? Um, you're doing, uh, I'll try and, uh, the create from strings, it doesn't do multiples, multiple creation of water strings like the create from strings option does. Um, it is very much a, a manual layout. So in some respects, it does take over a lot of the work that the manual create water string did. Uh, it doesn't have the automatic grading. Um, that's one thing that's missing from that in the create water string, but it is, the create water string allows you to create and edit one string. And the beauty of the quick water network is you saw I could do two pipelines going into a junction and then I could edit both of those junction pipelines straight away rather than having to um, have two separate water create editors open for each pipeline. So you, you lose a little bit in some respects, um, which are generally taken over by the water model template and the water network editor, but being able to edit, multiple, edit and create multiple strings is um, the big advantages that you get. Okay, uh, Human has asked, how can we design specific a specific node in the existing set of nodes? Can you just repeat that for me, Lisa? Sure, uh, how can we design one specific node in an existing set of nodes? That being uh, within the Cook Water Network, you can change the node type, you can change the name, you can change the colour. Um, so within the Quick Water Network, that's the way that you can edit a single node within a bunch of nodes. Um, so those main properties being the name and the colour and the type. And from the drainage.4D file, um, you're choosing those types from that drainage.4D setup file. So any additional properties that need to be automatically set will be set by changing that node type. Okay, great. And oh, we've had a few here. So um, Joseph has asked, is linking stormwater catchment into a manhole similar to how we did it in 12D Model 14? Yes. Absolutely is. Yep, you can do that like I did manually within the network editor or the concept stormwater designer, or if you've got the catchments file, that runs exactly the same way as it did inside um, version 14 and earlier. Wonderful. Uh, Lucian has said, uh, are there any issues switching between concept and detailed network presentation during design? So switching back and forth. Um, no, uh, once you've completed the creation of the network, you would typically switch between uh, pick your favorite flavor of editor, uh, which would be the concept stormwater designer or the water network editor. Anything that you do in either of those will transfer across. So I quite often um, switch between the water network editor and the stormwater concept designer and anything I change in between those two interfaces are still stored on the water network and passed across. Okay, uh, so I think we'll just do we'll just do the last three now. So sure. um, yep, and we'll do uh, email the rest of everyone back. Thanks everyone for your enthusiasm. Yes, thank uh, so you. So Max, Max has asked, is there a quick way to change 
uh, many drainage type, uh, like to change multiple drainage types in one go, apart from the export and import function? No, the import and the export function is by far and away the fastest way to do it. Um, otherwise, you're cycling through, or in the case of the CSD, you're um, still cycling through, but editing one node at a time. So uh, one thing that I used to do quite often is in my defaults, I forgot to set the appropriate link type or link material. I created from strings, I've got a hundred pipes and the way to bulk update those is absolutely from the spreadsheet because you can just do a copy down of a hundred rows and hit copy and paste and you're back into it. So no, that, that is still the quickest way to, um, to bulk change properties. Okay. Uh... And oh, John in Victoria said, how did you get the 3D lids and head walls onto the water model? Oh yeah, that's actually a very, some, uh, some of you may not have been started um, utilizing the TriMesh referencing feature inside 12D, uh, which you can attach within the drainage.4D file. Rather than go into great detail, um, we did a, we had a presentation about how to set those all up in our last online tech forum, and I believe there's going to be an update from that in our uh, conference. But the way that's done is by having a side library of objects uh, with good names, and within the drainage.4D file, you can say, hey, if I'm picking this particular node type, then please go and grab um, the grate and the lintel type and the, um, you know, the, the chamber and the plate type. So whenever you swap over those node types instantaneously in the water network editor, as soon as you hit set node details, it absolutely goes and just changes for you. Okay, fabulous. Uh, and Amanda in Wellington asked, um, how do you make a water model template? That's good because I would I did mention that two or three times and I realized in the webinar that I didn't actually go into any detail about making a water <laughs> model template. So what I might do is I might just share my screen if I can. Okay, sure. I'll just um I can help you with that. Thank you. And it's ridiculously easy. Okay, so I'm back in the project here. Um it's literally just a 12DA file. So if you've set up a water network and let's say it's for your particular territorial authorities, you've got all of the settings and um, the specifics for you know, council type A, and you want to use all of those settings without having to go through them um, every single time you do a job for that particular council, uh, up in the water model template, or you can also access that from in version 15 under the water water setup water model template, it's the same panel where you can both read the settings in and write the settings out. So if I wanted to pass along or save away all of the settings from the model, I can simply change that to write, choose the model that I want to save away those water template settings and give it a file name, you know, my settings. And that would obviously live in your company user library so you could use it over and over in different projects and then hit process, and that's basically it done. Creating a water temp model template is very easy, but you saw from the demonstration that it will save you a bunch of time um, after creating the networks to instantly apply all of those water model settings. Well, thanks for that, Dylan. And yes, yeah, sorry to those attendees whose questions we didn't get to live, but I'll be emailing you through a report shortly, and um, you can send off a few more answers and get back to these happy people? I certainly will. So the recording of today's webinar, that was the other question that came through from a few people. Um, so yes, we will be providing a recording of today's webinar and um, we'll be, I'll email it through um, to everybody who registered, but uh, we'll also have it up on the webinars page of our website and on our 12D Model YouTube channel. And so keep an eye on our emails and social media for details of the upcoming webinars. We should be having another few definitely over the next um, next couple of months. Uh, and don't forget, we have our tech forum back to being an in-person event in July in Brisbane, 28th to 30th of July at Brisbane Convention Centre. So if you're not already registered for that, definitely pop along. And the closing date for the Innovation Awards is the 30th of April. So if you haven't got your entry in for that, um, yeah, 
that it's getting time, two months to go, and we've got some great entries coming through already, so keep those coming in. If you want to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you all for attending, and we hope to see you at future webinars.